If you need to quickly set up your Zoom F3 to record with microphones or from a mixing board, here's how you do that. First up, we need to add a micro SD card over here on the side. That can be a micro SD HC, micro SD XC card up to one terabyte in size. And I will say this, audio doesn't need nearly as much space as video does. So I'm running a 32 gigabyte card and I can record plenty here. So don't go crazy. If you are not sure whether your card will work with a Zoom F3 and you haven't bought one yet, head on over to zoomcorp.com and take a look at the Zoom F3 page. Go to the downloads. There you will see a list of compatible SD cards. So I recommend doing that. Next up, we're gonna put batteries in to power up the F3. Now you have a couple of options here. You can see I had a USB cable plugged in there. Now I have two AA lithium batteries in here. I'd put two batteries of the same exact kind in here. Don't mix and match and make sure you use fresh batteries when you put them in. Then what you'll also want to do is power on after you put the batteries on and we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down. You just press and hold the power button until the red light comes on, let go, and it will come on. The first time you turn it on, it may ask for some initial settings. So that'll be things like setting your language and your date and time. That's very simple. Just do that and you should be good. Next up, we're going to come into the menu, which we get in by pressing the menu button over here. And then we're gonna come down to system. So you can see these buttons are kind of programmable buttons, if you will, and it tells you what each of them does. So if I wanna go back out of this menu, I press the left button. If I want to go up, I press this button, down this button, and enter this button. So we're going to come down to the system menu. Press enter to go in. Very good. And then I'm going to come down until I get to the power menu. When I'm in the power menu here, I want to go ahead and choose my battery type. In my case, I'm using lithium batteries. If you're using just regular disposable batteries, choose alkaline. If you're using uh, regular rechargeable batteries use nickel metal hydride and if you're using rechargeable or disposable batteries which specifically say that they are lithium then choose lithium why is this important and then when you're done you can go ahead and press back to come back out of the menu so just to confirm you go in you go to the one you want to choose and you press the check button I want lithium so I press check and then I press back to come back out of the menu this is important because the zoom f3 needs to know what type of battery it's using to give you accuracy on your battery status indicator here and to know when the battery is run out. That's why it's important to set that on the settings here. Now, you can also power via USB-C. So here, for example, we have a USB battery bank connected. I'll go ahead and plug that in. Notice what happens when I plug it into the battery status. Now it's plugged in and the battery status disappears. That means you are now powering via USB-C. If you need to know how much is left on your battery, your external battery, you have to look on the battery itself instead of on the Zoom F3. The Zoom F3 just doesn't know. <laughs> also, you can plug in not just the USB battery banks, but if you have a USB-C to AC adapter, you can use that as well, or you could plug into a computer, and all of those should power your Zoom F3 just fine. Now, next up, we need to format the SD card. So we're going to come back into the menu. Now, if you have already formatted your SD card, you'll want to do it again here just because it's really important to format it in the recorder so that you can ensure that everything is going to record okay. So we're going to come into the system menu, come down to SD card, and then we're going to go ahead and choose format. I'm going to come up to execute, which is a rather ominous way of saying go ahead and format the card. <laughs> It'll take it a little while. Again, this is a 32 gigabyte card. If you're using a larger card, it may take even longer. What I would also recommend is the first time you do use a new card, I would do a quick test just to make sure it's going to work okay. Again, execute, ominous. There we go. It's just gonna quickly test and make sure it can write okay to the card. In this case, it passed. So that means we should probably be good. So we'll come and pop back out of the menu. All right, now we can connect our microphones. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect one microphone. Of course, you can connect two because we have two XLR inputs. It should snap in just like that. And you can see already we got some signal. That's, uh, that's good. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna do here is show you how you would set this up. Normally, it may not come on right at first. So what you wanna do is these buttons down here allow you to control the inputs as well. So for the left input here, input number one, I can choose this second button that has a gear on the on the printed on here. I'm gonna go ahead and press that button there. 
I'm going to go ahead and, and choose and make sure that that input source is turned on. We're good there. Then we want to choose source. Source tells the F3 what you've plugged into that input. And you can plug in a variety of different things. So you can plug in what they're just calling a mic. So if you have a dynamic microphone that does not require phantom power, then you'll want to choose that one. The second option is mic plus 48V. What is that? That is a microphone that requires 48 volts phantom power. Most condenser microphones require that. If you're not sure whether your microphone does or not, look at the documentation for your microphone. If you don't have the documentation for your microphone, go look it up on the web. You'll certainly find it out there. And that'll tell you whether or not you need phantom power, 48 volts. Okay, if you're getting an audio source or an audio feed from, say, for example, a sound mixer, then you would choose line. So those are the three options here. We're using a microphone that requires phantom power, so we're going to go ahead and select that. And then we can pop back out of the menu. And that should get us in a good spot. Next up, let's come to the record menu. I'm going to go ahead and press the menu button here. We're going to go into recording and we'll go into sample rate. Now, if you don't know what sample rate you need, I would tell you to use 48 kilohertz. In 99.9% .9 of cases, that's going to be great. If you're worried about audio quality and you're thinking, well, I want the best audio quality, so shouldn't I choose 192 kilohertz? Well, the best audio engineers in the world generally can't tell the difference between 192 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz generally. So the higher sample rates are generally, if you're gonna be recording uh, sound effects and you're going to want to slow them down, that's that might be when you wanna choose those, but otherwise I would just choose 48 and we can pop back out of there. Next up, we wanna choose the file format. Now, if you're recording just individual microphones, you'll choose mono. If on the other hand, you're trying to get a stereo recording, you specifically have two microphones that are that are matched, that are similar, and you want to record them as a stereo sound source, like for example, nature recordings, then you would choose stereo. If you are going to record two people, two separate people talking, you'll want to choose mono because you want each of the microphones to be managed as a mono audio source so that you can edit them separately when you're in post-production or editing. We'll come on back out. All right, there's one other thing in there that I want to set, so let's come back into the menu. In the recording menu, come down one more and there's a, something called pre-rec. This is pre-record, so when I press the record button and pre-rec is turned on, it will actually go back to the six seconds prior to the time I pressed record and capture that audio as well. What does that mean? That means the Zoom F3 is actually always listening, so <laughs> just so that you're aware. So we can go ahead and turn that on and we can get those six seconds prior. Why would you ever want that? Well, if you're a little bit late getting to the record button and you wanted to capture something, you can get those six seconds prior, depending on how the rest of your Zoom F3 is set up. If you have a higher sample rate you're using, you will not get as much pre-record time. It's just a trade-off that you make. So we'll go ahead and leave that on and pop back out. Next, what we need to do is adjust our levels. And to do that with this one microphone we've set up so far, I can go ahead and press this button right here and then that'll allow me to increase the levels. You'll notice the waveforms are getting bigger and bigger. Obviously we don't wanna go too big cause then they're going to be running right up against the top line and we'll have to do extra work in post to make it sound right. But somewhere in this range right here, if I was recording spoken word, will work just right. Don't worry about the number there. This is X32. It should be whatever it is for your microphone. Every microphone, every voice is different. But we probably don't want something like that. We want something that's going to be more like somewhere in this range right here, maybe maybe here, or maybe even here. So again, not something that's hitting up, up against the top lines and not something that's so small that you can barely see it. So in our case here, I would probably go minus, or I'd go X32, or maybe I'd go X16, somewhere in there. So that is setting your levels. Now, once we've done that, we are ready to record, and the way you do that is you actually slide this switch on the side towards record, and it starts recording. And then when you're done recording, you slide it that way again, and the little red LED turns off, and that means you're done recording. While you're recording, one thing you can do as well is you can slide the switch down to the hold position. And you can do that so that you lock all the controls so you don't accidentally bump something out. And then when you're ready, you can slide it back off of hold and stop the recording. So that's a quick look at how to set up your Zoom F3 for recording with a microphone right out of the box.